Hey everyone, Tickle G here, who's all about tech and travel. And this is going to be a quick review on the One Netbook One GX1 Pro. Next to it is its predecessor, the One GX1. So for short, I'll call this GX1 GX1 Pro. The Pro version has beat up specs over the predecessor, and I will leave the specs in the, uh, for both in the comic section, or the main important specs in the comic section. Now, while I've said this is the best made um, HHPC on the market, uh, this one, now that I have it, is the best one ever made because of the beefed up specs. And because of the, and the main beefed up spec is the processor, this has an 11th generation uh, Intel processor, it's the 1160G7, and this has a 10th generation, I believe it's a uh, 1035. Um, the stickers on the bottom of the machine, I can't check it right now because it has some stuff going on. However, as far as the GX1 Pro is concerned, because of the better specs, you'll get better performance out of this over this one. Um, Weight-wise, pretty much the same. Um, you can put detachable controllers on this one and this one as well. Pretty much the same computer, like I said, just different guts. Because of the different guts and mainly the uh, processor, you can play certain games on this one that you can't play on this one. Uh, for example, there are some AAA games that I can never play on this, but I can now play on this because of the Beta processor. Emulators work well on both of these. However, the uh, Real Jinx or the Yuzu emulator, which plays Nintendo Switch games, works a lot better on the Beta processor or the GX1 Pro than the GX1. Barely runs anything on this one. But this one, pretty much every game runs. Now, when I say run, I mean playable speed. I'm not looking at the exact FPS. I'm not looking to see if it's going to play at 40 FPS, 50 FPS, 54 FPS. As long as it's playable or I can get from start to end, I'm good. Playable for me, 30 FPS. I will say 25 FPS and up. I mean, 25 is kind of pushing it. It's slightly slower than 30, but that's still kind of playable. So as long as it's 25-ish and up, I'm good. So I don't really care if a game is running at 60 FPS. As long as it's running and I can get from beginning to end without a lot of stuttering, I'm good to go. So when a lot of people put the FPS on there, that's fine and dandy. But at the end of the day, if you really think about it, for those who are old heads like me, when you were playing your Sega Genesis games, did you really care about FPS? Nope. You just care about how fun the game was. So when I was playing Ultra Beast on the Sega Genesis, I just cared about getting the orbs, turning to the beast, and fighting the boss. I didn't care about the FPS. As long as the game ran and it ran at a good speed, I was good to go. So whenever whenever I'm doing um, gaming reviews or reviews on PCs, or whatnot, I'm not. I was gonna put up the what do you call it? Well, I'll just say the FPS display and and the other information, temperature speed or temperature. Uh, gauge or whatever, I'm not going to do all that. As long as it runs well, I'm good to go. And what's good about either one of these, um, if the computer does run too hot, you do have adjustable fan speed. So if you press the function button and this one right here, this runs the fan low. And if you press this one over here, it's far end, it runs it high. So function, listen. And now it's running on low. That's what's up. So you can control the fan speed. So slow, fast. That's it. Just two speeds. That's all you get. Still, that's better than nothing. Especially if you're playing in bed and you have a significant other and you don't want the fan speed or the fan noise to uh, disturb the person that's in the bed with you. So, again, beat the specs. Better gameplay on a lot of games. So, oh, the PS3 emulator runs very well on here. Not so well on here. Um, there were some games I was not able to play, but that might be compatibility issues with the emulator. But Dragon's Quest, that ran. Heavenly Sword, I believe that ran. Um, Dragon Guard 3, that ran great. Um, started off not so okay. 
Um, graphics were a little off, but as you play the game, yeah, it wasn't too bad. And I think it was running at t between 20 and 30 frames per second. But like I said, not too worried about the frames per second unless it's too low where I can't play it. But other than that, ran pretty. Uh, the PS3 emulator ran pretty well on the GX1 Pro. They both have 12,000 milliamp batteries, so these will last a while. I mean, especially if you're running it on low TDP or low wattage, these will last for a good while. So if you're playing uh, low-end emulators, Nintendo uh, NES emulators, Super Nintendo emulator, put this on low wattage. I believe the lowest you can get is 5, but if you tweak it a little bit, if you run Intel's XTU, you can get it to run at 3 watts. You can get it to run at 1 watt. Um, don't know how safe that is, but I've ran this one at 3 watts, never conked that on me, so pretty sure you can run this at 3 watts too if you um, tweak it. Um, I never messed with the BIOS on this one, so I can't really say that I've uh, tested the uh, TDP on this one. I do have some apps that allow you to change TDP as well, but like I said, I'm pretty sure this can run at 3 watts or even 1 watt if you wanted to. Now as far as likes for the GS1 Pro, um, yeah, the specs boost gives get is a definite thumbs up um like i said a lot more games you can play on this one um that's pretty much it because it's pretty much the same device so with the beast up processor yeah uh who wouldn't choose this one over this one uh because you can play um, more games on it oh yeah the stylus the stylus which i do have a battery in works on this and check it out works on this one too and this is the one made by one netbook i don't know any other stylus that works with these two that are active styluses meaning that they take battery doesn't need to emulate a finger on the screen so this has 1024 pressure sensitivity so boom there you go stylus works on both um pcs I also told you in the preview video that some models have a modem built in. So this has a modem built in and it's a 4G modem. So I can put a SIM card in and get 4G speeds on here to have any time I want. Which is awesome. So if you don't have Wi-Fi signal, go to cellular, you're good to go. So if your phone works, this will work. The 5G variant, oh my gosh, the price is astronomical. I'm talking $1,700. That's slightly over seventeen hundred. I'm talking like seventeen twenty, blah blah, seventeen thirty, depending on the website that you look at. But man, that five G one, oh, the specs are up, and there's no other HHPC that I know of that can run at cellular at five G. Even a GPD one four that has a four G modem, cool. But five G, you're like I said, you're gonna pay a pretty penny for it. But if you get it, oh man, the speed is gonna be impeccable. Dislikes about this. First thing, um, the price. If you're buying at retail, price is still up there. Price is, um, I believe, what, $1,350 or blah, blah, and up. Like I said, the 5G variant, $1,700. So price, bad. I got this one. Um, the seller on eBay said it was open box. I showed you in the preview. Definitely was an open box. This is used. So the seller had it for 1000 I got it for 600 that's a steal for the GX1 Pro. Can't lie. No one else on the history of this planet has sold it for that low. Not that I believe. But if someone got one for lower than that and can show that you did in the receipt, I'll believe every word you're saying. But other than that, I got the receipt for this. I mean, I swaggled. 600 like I said, happy with it. But not completely happy. Because like I said, when you're getting something used on eBay, you don't know what you're getting. You don't know if it's 100% uh, or even 90% working. So after testing this, uh, this wasn't working so well. It was glitching very, very bad this morning. I'm talking little blips and bleeps of the screen that you're on, but it was on like this side and it's only, only like popping up on about right here. It was glitching so bad, and I think it's the display cable. Now, usually you have a display problem with the, with the clamshell um, with the GPD Win 2. That one had a very terrible display problem because the ribbon, the ribbon cable was wrapped around the hinge to open and close. 
the um, clamshell, the lid, and it came off, and that was bad. So with this one, I don't know where the ribbon cable is for this one, but I believe it might be in the same area because, like I said, it's just glitching, and I think it's loose. Now, I don't want to take this apart to try to fix it, so that's just my, that's my biggest gripe of this. Plus, um, the first day that I've used it, the keyboard completely shut down. Completely. I mean, I was trying to type. Nothing was registering. I reset it. Didn't work. But after about 10 minutes, shut down again. I cannot work with a computer like that, especially when I'm at work. So if I'm teaching from this at work, I don't want this to break down or to glitch because that will deter my teaching at work. So I need to make sure I have one that works properly. That can work for years. So while I got this for 600 maybe that's why I got it for 600 Because the seller did not mention any of the things I just mentioned to you in the description. Don't know if it's the seller's fault or not. Don't know if the seller actually knew. Have no idea. But it should have been mentioned. This should have been tested before being shipped out. So like I said, maybe that's why I got it for 600 Because maybe the seller knew but didn't put it in the description. So this will be going back. And I will be looking for another one. Like I said, there is one more on eBay that has an OBO or or best offer. Um, the price to set at is twelve hundred though, so I don't think I'm gonna get it for a half price. I completely doubt it from that particular seller. But if I can, then I'll probably get this again. Other than that, I can use this and I can use Parsec to play uh, beefed up games or the Switch emulator from my computer that has Parsec on it in my man cave downstairs. So other than that, fine computer. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely great. Comparing it to the HHPCs that are coming out this year from GPD, One Netbook, and Aya, and those will be again from my preview video, GPD One Four, uh, One X Player Two with the deta detachable controllers, and the Aya Neo Two. Um, if I had to compare if I had to um, steer you on which one to get, don't get this. Because you won't probably be able to find this at $600. If you can find it at $600, hands down, get that. Great price. Because the gameplay, or just, just the performance, will be equivalent to any of the HHPCs that has the Intel 1165G7 processor. Very close to that number. So expect performance to be close to that. Well, it depends on the company. They may tweak some things in the BIOS. But again, expect the performance of the 11 compared to the 1165G7. Don't forget, this has an 1160G7 processor, Intel, inside. But again, compared to the newer ones, um, retail price, $1,350 or more? No. You can get the GPD Win 4 base model, uh, seven, no, $800? Yeah, much better price than 1300 But the keyboard is to die for. This keyboard runs circle around any keyboard that's on any HHPC. Kid you not. Except for this one, because it's the same. These keys feel like butter. I mean, listen. They sound so delicious, and they feel great on the fingers. Excellent. Fantastic Hands down, best keyboard on the market for any HHPC. So one netbook, keep doing what you're doing with this keyboard. The one you got for the One X Player, oh my God, no. The One X Player 2, which is the same keyboard for the One X Player 1, oh my God, no. This keyboard right here, yes. Yes, keep making that, please. And give me a review unit of the One X Player 2. Let me review that so I can uh, give you my unbiased, honest opinions about that. So, that's the end of this review. Again, I would not recommend this at retail price. Try to swag on somebody on eBay. Yes, get it. But other than that, I would not recommend this when there's other HHPCs that will run circles around this particular one. However, keyboard, you're not going to find again on any other HHPC unless one that book copies this or can copy it. But again, that's the end of this review. And I hope you liked it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Tell your friends about my channel. And I hope to see you in my next video.